I'm going to rant about something after this first set though, so let me just do this. <clears throat> Good job. All right, cool. So, as you can see, I go pretty deep with my uh, tricep dips there because I'm trying to get as much range of motion as possible. So last week, someone commented, if you want to go back and check that vlog, someone commented about the fact that you shouldn't go past 90 degrees because you will get injured slash you're at risk of injury. I left a very, very long answer, which you can actually go and read, but the crux of it is this, that that simply just is not the case. There's no evidence to back that. And it might be the case if you're someone who's deconditioned and never done that movement before. But if you look at elite gymna gymnasts in the Olympics who are going into crazy um, flexed, extended positions through their shoulders at more than 90 degrees you can see that that just probably is not the case and it's just a case of having to expose yourself gradually to those movements and get stronger within certain ranges so it really does depend but it's not helpful to kind of say don't go to this range or you'll get injured and there's one other point tied to that that I did not mention as the answer was long enough. The concept of a nocebo, whereby you, your negative or your expectations of a negative outcome can almost lead to that happening. The opposite of a placebo, right? And so if you go into any form of exercise thinking that you're gonna get injured or thinking that it's gonna cause pain, that's immediately going to alter, potentially, how you approach the exercise. And you're not gonna be so focused on executing the movement, you're gonna be more focused on trying to stay away from this injury that you think you are going to get. And because of that shift in perception from the performance of the skill and the movement to this outcome that probably will or it might well be a mechanism for you to potentially um, experience some discomfort injury etc because you're not focusing on executing the movement in a way that's going to keep you safe so that's uh that's my other like two cents on that that being said, you know, I've been training since I was 16. If, you know, I've done a lot of exercises. So I, by this point, you know, I'm 35 now. By this point, you'd think that I do have a good awareness of my body and what movements are going to hurt, particularly as I have actually had um, an injury on my shoulder, a rugby injury. And I actually am very mindful of the movement in that shoulder whenever I'm doing movements that affect the shoulder. To the point that, you know, obviously I don't want to get injured. I don't want to get injured, right? So, but the fact that I'm able to go to that depth and not get injured does show that it probably isn't, um, you know, going to, to a certain range is not inherently going to cause an injury. Okay, guys, it gets, uh, it gets hot in there very quickly after those dips. So the dips I just did, 10, 10, 10. The last rep was RIR1. One rep left in the tank. Um, so that means next session, 
I will be going up to um, or increasing the weight probably by just that much for my dips. So now it's weighted pull-ups. Um, last week I was just finding the weights because it was the first session of the block. Uh, I need my chalk which I have remembered. So hopefully that stays. So um, yeah, today I'm doing a 20, 21.5 kg, playing it safe, three sets of five, still keeping this in a strength range, and um, uh, we'll see how I do, mate, see how I do. Right. Dry off them hands. Hopefully not too many sets today. I think I'll try and do a partial, um, some uh, lengthened partials on the final set. But the goal today is I really want to hit three sets of five because last week I did a, the middle set because I bit off more than I could chew. I did, I did um, five, three, five, which is rubbish. So, um, chest to bar, obviously, otherwise it doesn't count for me. Tight grip. Let's go. <sighs> Good. Set one done. Um, something else I saw earlier on. So I'm researching for um, some videos that I'm gonna be filming tomorrow. And then one of the videos, so I'm doing a chin-up video tomorrow, comparing chin-ups and pull-ups, the biomechanics of each one. So it's interesting doing that. Also, I've written three programs, a series of programs. Sorry about the segue, but I've written a series of three programs they build off from one another. So the uh, first program is master the vertical pull, and it's basically a chin-up and pull-up program, and um, you do those concurrently. Once you've mastered that, that's a 16-week program. The goal is obviously to get you to be able to do reps with chin-ups and pull-ups. We go on to master the heavy pull. These are working titles, and so, the goal with that is to take you to a stage whereby you can do weighted pull-ups. Um, and the goal is to get you to do weighted pull-up with plus 10 kg. And then after that, I see that as a decent, not a prerequisite, but if you can do a weighted pull-up with 10 kilograms, you have got a strong pull, which means that muscle-ups are going to be easy uh, to learn. And so that's the next phase of the program. So the final program is master the explosive pull. And that is all about being able to do a muscle up. And there's a uh, lots of, I mean, it's a periodized program. Um, first one is 16 weeks, 12 weeks, and then eight weeks. That doesn't mean it's gonna take you that long. Some of them, you might need to repeat the program in order to get you to where we want to get you to. But ultimately, the goal is for you to be able to do a muscle up. So, yeah, that's the segue aside. In fact, let me tell you after this set. Let me tell you after this one. All right. Okay. So. Someone um, in a video was saying how you shouldn't go to a dead hang because it will put stress on your joints. I believe that's what he was saying. Again, it's that other, it's that nocebo thing and that who are we talking to when we say this? Are we talking to someone who's deconditioned, who's never really done pull-ups or muscle-ups? And again, where's the evidence? 
like, are there any scientific studies, you know, is there any literature that shows that when you are resting in a lengthened position during an exercise that you are at added risk of injury? The answer is no, purely because you can't really study that. You can only look at, um, I guess, incidences of injuries and pick out potential relationships. And the only known relationship that we have when it comes to injuries is, have you injured that part of the body before? And if you have, it's more likely to get injured again. It's never anything to do with posture, flexibility, mobility, anything like that. I mean, they could be mechanisms, but the only reason they would be a mechanism is if you are exploring ranges that you are just not comfortable in, or exploring movements, novel movements, that are just going to be potentially too intense. So for example, if I brought my grandma in and got her to do barbell squats, having, her having never done them before, and never looked at her posture, then yeah, you could say she's gonna get injured. But if I bring in, you know, Daniel Carter, I don't know why I said Daniel Carter, sick rugby player, brought him in to do, you know, squats or even pull-ups, etc., cetera, um, and got him to go into these ranges, he's probably gonna be a lot more proficient and maybe less prone to injuries because he's a very conditioned athlete, or at least was. I don't know why I picked someone who wasn't current. I should have said Jude Bellingham, because I love him. Right, okay, you've got, um, one more set. One more set of five. It'll be good if I hit five because that's three sets of five. But it was getting, I was losing it in the um, lower traps towards the end of that last set. Okay, let's go. Length and partial. Two more. Jesus. Yeah. Ooh, that does get hard very quickly. We are doing three sets. Um, last week I managed 888, and uh, I'm going to try and do nine um, or 898. Eight. I'm going to play it safe on the first set. I don't want to show all my cards. Show all my cards right off the bat. That's a fool's move. So uh, play it safe with an eight and then bang. Lay down the ace, royal flush on the second set, nine. Very strategic game, lifting weights. Very strategic. You just didn't know they had to factor this stuff in, but you do. Right understanding your fatigue and performance and uh, how to perform a set very very strategic so um, I just know this is going to be hard that's why I'm kind of still babbling but we're going to go for uh, yeah like I said start with a, start with number eight okay let's go <laughs> bad so rest I am going to do yeah that I will be able to hit nine on the next set if I hit ten on the final great if I only hit um, if I only hit eight that's also fine because um, it's progressed from last week 
So, uh, yeah. All right. Leave me alone with these ones. I'm gonna, I'm gonna do these myself. That wasn't my best performance. I did, I did three sets of eight. Did not hit that nine in the middle set and the final set. That was um, that eighth was a push. So uh, that being said, overall volume for the session, I'm happy with. Particularly as I've worked my chest with the dips already. Um, well, more the uh, sternocostal fibers as opposed to the clavicular. But um, yeah, now I am doing incline bicep curls, which you've not seen me do yet, I don't think. I really like this exercise because I really do feel it towards the end, like a nice, a nice pain that I never normally feel. So let's go for it. Two more. Oh, shit. Eleven. Oh, I feel that now. Uh, Twelve. Oh, that reminds me, if you've not seen it yet, the, um, I did a video on how to grow your biceps and basically talked about um, the three main components of the biceps that we're trying to build. The uh, long head, uh, the short head, so they're what comprise the biceps, and um, the uh, brachialis, which sits under the bicep, and basically gave different exercises for each of those. So check it out. So um, I think I should be doing 10 reps, but I got to 10 and was just like, I can definitely do more. So I'm just checking my laptop. Yeah, eight to 10, which means that we are going to go heavier on the next set, 35s. This is, gonna, this is a big jump though. Ideally, I'd want a, well, not a 35, 32 or something. This is obviously pounds, guys. If it was 32, that'd be a nice jump. So, Let's hope that I can get eight reps on this one. So now we are doing these nice leaning lateral raises that I'm really liking at the moment. Starts you at a slight angle. So we are forced to um, isolate the uh, middle delt more. And I bring it up at an angle so it comes up in the same line as uh, all the same in the scapular angle called scaption, whereby your shoulder, essentially you just don't move your shoulder. I'm like blabbering a lot here, but essentially you're just keeping your shoulder in its natural position. And when you do that, your arm raises in this natural position. And so the fibers line up correctly. And that's why I am lifting it at a slight angle. This happens towards the end of a workout. You just can't speak. I can't speak at the best of times, not eloquently in any case, or with any skill in articulating what the hell is actually going through my mind. But uh, now I think I'll, that's, that's, that's gonna be too heavy. That's gonna be too, let's see. Let's see if I can get eight. Oh, now after the first rep. One, two, three, four. Five. Six. Seven, you got it. Eight, all right, quick rest. Bizarrely, bizarrely, uh, something odd about this position. 
you know, it's kind of like, you're kind of like in a suggestive position, almost like a hello boys position. And then when you lift the arm, it's like, oh, like you're revealing something, um, which almost made me laugh during that set, but I, I stayed focused and I kept going. All right, next, uh, next set. One, two, three. The annoying thing is, um, because, so, uh, you've probably heard me talk about my right shoulder rugby injury in previous vlogs. It does mean that this shoulder moves in a completely different way. And I do experience, not pain, but it feels completely different to my left. Excuse me. So, um, that means that um, I could easily do a good two to three reps more on my left side than my right side. Just how it is. I'm going to do two, two more sets of these and then we're done. I'm not doing anything for triceps because A, I forgot the band and B, I don't like the band and because I prefer to use cables. There's no cable machine here and because I've done tricep dips which has already worked with the triceps. Um, I'm okay with not doing any kind of push down. And also, I started adding a random accessory day on the weekend, so I like to make it up then. Um, just because, you know, if I've got time and some energy on the weekend, just like to pop into the gym, see what I go on. Two more. Yeah. <sighs> Fuck. Hey. They're tough. Oh, yeah. All right, straight into it. Five, six, seven, eight, oh yeah. eight, nine, ten. Ooh. All right, I need to write this down. 27.5 is what we did there. So, do you track your workouts? If not, why not? And if not, and you're trying to make some form of progress, you really, really should. Incline bicep curl, we did 30, then 35, uh, 10, no, 12, 8, 8. And I've got one more set of these boys. In fact, let's finish up there with you. I'm going to do one more set, but I'm going to do this in peace. Um, thanks for watching, guys. I'll see you in the next vlog.